Hello, and here we are again to continue our discussion of SpriteKit. Today, I'd like to introduce physics. I'm going to use um, Keynote here, except I'm just going to manually operate it um, without using the slideshow mode, right? So what are physics categories? Well, a physics category is a UNT32, okay? So essentially, it's a number in the computer, an unsigned integer with 32 bits, Okay, so this can produce a, a number, you know, we could figure it out, but essentially it looks like this. Okay, so a physics category um, is a way that objects are, are arranged or categorized within the physics system. So you can have groups of objects or categories of objects that do different things or interact with each other differently. Okay, and the way that we determine a category is we give each category its own unique bit. Okay, so for example, if um, we have a category that doesn't interact with anything, then we could just give it the bit zero, and then it would have zeros in all of the spots here. Um, we could give something else a category of one, and then it would have zeros in all of these, you know, spots, and then a one right here, okay? We could give something a category of two, and it would have a zero here and a one here and zeros everywhere else, okay? Um, we might give something a category of three, or we might look at something that is a category of three, and um, it might have a one here and a one here, right? Okay, and if we gave something a category of four, then it would have a zero here, a zero here, and a one there, okay? So this is equivalent of the binary number four, right? And this is the binary number two, okay? Um, so what does that mean? Well, essentially, you know, just in a nutshell, and I'm going to go over this in more detail in a moment, but essentially... Everything that has a number one in the first slot is kind of in the same category. So actually, one and three share this spot, so they're in the same category together, okay? Two and three share this second spot, so they're in the same category. So actually, three would interact with two and one, but one and two would not interact, okay? So, you know, um, you know again, like the nutshell version... Um, uh, physics categories are UNT32, and each slot here, or each, you know, um, I don't know, bit is, you know, one category. If something has a one in that spot, then that's its category, okay? Um, let's go into this in more detail, okay? Let's imagine that you were going to create a game, okay? And your game is going to have several different kinds of interaction, okay? So you might have a situation where something doesn't interact with something else or something that, you know, doesn't want to, um, or, or we have a situation where two things interact, but or, or they might interact, but nothing happened. And that might be this category, zero, okay? You might have another situation where you have a, a player object and we need to give it a unique category because the player is a unique element on the screen. Um, we give it the category one, okay? So that's a unique category, right? Um, and then maybe we have a ground object, so the player might bump into the ground or things might hit the ground, and so we give the ground its own category because that's different from a player, right? Okay, so we give it a, a category of two, or it's really a number one in the second bit, okay? And then, you know, we might have a situation where something's a category three where the one and the, you know, in the first bit and the one in the second bit interact, right? So it might look like this. We're going to come to this, this situation in a little bit, right? Um, imagine we also had a, another category, maybe number four here with a one here, and that's a coin. So a player might bump into the ground. They might have a physical interaction with the ground. But as they hit a coin, they don't bounce off the coin, but they collect the coin. So they pass through it and they pick it up, okay? Okay. Um, Coins are different from players and different from the ground, so they need a unique category. Now, if your game had hundreds of coins, you wouldn't make a new item here, right? A new, a new, you know, number, a new, you know, uh, you know, uh, spot here, you know, something like this. You might not make it a new one like that for a second coin, but uh, you know, all the coins can share the same value. Okay, so all coins would be this this value, right? All ground planes would be this value, okay? Because um, it's a category, right? It's not a unique thing, okay? So anyway, so there, there's kind of a, an explanation of how we might assign these to objects in the game. Um, so one thing that we got to understand when we talk about physics 
categories is that we're going to use bitwise operations on them. And bitwise operations, rather than adding numbers together numerically, like 2 and 2 equals 4, or 1 and 3 equals 4, or 5 and 7 equals you know 12, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of the bits together, okay? And one of the operations that we're going to use is called an OR, okay? And an OR says, hey, if the digit here is a 1 or a 0, then the answer is going to have a 1 there. So in this case, we've got a 1 here and a 0 here. We get a 1, okay? If we had a number 1 here and a 1 here, then we'd also get a 1, okay? Um, if we have a 0 and a 0, then we get a 0. So if everybody's 0, we get a 0. If there's any 1s, we get a 1. Okay, and so we just kind of imagine like you're just looking at each column here. Okay, so and if we think of the columns each as individual categories, like the the category bitmask starts to make more sense because you know this is a situation where you know we have we might have something here and something here, and then we're like, okay, there is something in that column, right? And then or this category, right? And then in the second category, well, there's nothing in that category, right? And in the third category, there's nothing in that category. Okay. So let's go on a little bit further, right? Okay, to write this in code, we use the bar. So, you know, that same example here written in code would be written this way. We'd say, you know, um, zero, 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 or, you know, zero um, is equal to, or zero or one equals one, right? Uh, two or one equals three, okay? Um, and then the same thing here, you know, uh, three or one equals three, okay? Which doesn't make any sense mathematically, but bitwise it makes sense because we have, you know, n nothing in this column and a one in this column, so we get a one. We get nothing in this column or a zero in this column, and then we get a zero, right? Here we have a one in this column, a zero in this column, so we get a one. Here we have a zero and a one, so we get a one, right? It's the same thing down here, okay? So we're going to use this bitwise operation to figure out whether things um, contact or collide and whether they should contact and collide, okay? So uh, here's our physics categories. So we're going to set up, we're going to review these again, right? Um, none, player, ground, maybe something, and then coins, okay? So again, um, let's imagine that when we use these things, we want um, we want the player to collide with the ground so it has a physical interaction, right? And then we want the player to contact a coin, right, where it can pick it up, but it doesn't actually run into it or bump into it, okay? Um, so, you know, let's go over the, the physical interaction again, but kind of think about it in these terms, right? Um, if we have a 1, you know, a, a zero, 1, 0, and we bitwise with a zero, zero, 1, we get zero, 1, 1. Right? This is kind of like we would be saying ground or player. Right? So this could be a ground or a player. Right? Or we might write it like that. Okay? Um, you know, in this case, we might say a coin or a player. And then we get this answer. And this is a coin or player. Right? So we might use this to determine whether, you know, coin or player, whether the player hit the coin or contacted a coin. Okay? So let's... let's um, clarify the difference between contact and collision, okay? So um, uh, a contact is when two bodies make contact, so they touch, okay? They might be overlapping, like this case, or they might just be touching where the little corner here just bumps into the, the green one, just bumps into the, or the, the orange one, okay? Um, so, uh, so, you know, essentially a contact doesn't produce any physical effect, Okay, so it's not like this is the green one's going to bounce off the other one because of a contact. The red one certainly didn't bounce off the orange one because of the contact because they're overlapping, right? Um, but it does produce a callback. So a contact sends us information to say that two bodies made contact. They touched, okay? So we use that like maybe when a player picks up a coin or if we want to change the animation on our character as they touch the ground, okay? Okay. Um, so that's a contact, right? So uh, what's a collision, okay? So a collision is when two objects produce a physical interaction. There's no callback for this, though, so we don't know that it happened, 
okay? So for example, you'll notice none of the objects here are, are, are overlapping like this. You know, if we had a, a, a physical collision, the green box might run into the orange one and then, you know, bounce off it like that, or the, the red one might hit here and then bounce off, right? Or it might hit the orange one and knock it out of the way, and then it would bump into the green one and then, you know, you know ricochet off, right? Okay, so, so that's a collision. So when we want objects to collide with each other, when we want them to produce a physical interaction, we're going to have to set their collision bit mask so that they you know, collide or, and, and specify what objects they collide with or the category of objects they collide with, right? When we set the, the contact bit mask, we're going to set the category of objects another object makes contact with. In other words, when we set the contact bit mask, we're telling the computer that or the physics engine that we want to know when these two objects make contact however it is, whether it's this way or this way, right? When we want two objects to bounce off each other, right, and, and actually produce a physical interaction, then we're going to set their, their contact to a bit mask that says which categories of objects um, that, they'll, that they'll collide with, okay? So um, let's go over our physics categories again, okay? We've got none, player, ground, and coin, okay? Okay. Um, and then this one, we'll, we'll come back to that guy in, in a minute, right? Um, so uh, let's plan out our, 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 our game, right? Okay. So imagine that players can collide with the ground and players contact coins, but they don't collide with coins. Okay, so there's no collision between players and coins, but there is a collision between the ground and the player, but there's no contact between the, the player and the ground. Okay, maybe I should have put that in here. Let's do uh, uh, player um, and ground, no contact, right? Because I don't want to know when the player hits the ground. We might want to know, and we could include that, but for this example, let's say that we don't need to know, okay? Um, so let's say uh, player, no collision with coins. Okay, so there's no collision here. Okay, so the player is going to hit the ground and stop when it hits the ground. It's going to show a physical interaction, but it's not going to let us know when that happens. When a player hits a coin, really, it's just going to pass through the coin, right? But we're going to get a call back, and it's gonna, and our program will know when the player hits the coin. Okay, um, so what would that look like? So if we were going to plan this out and actually do it in our code, it might look like this. Um, player category is going to be 001, like we saw earlier, right? Remember uh, wherever that was, right over here? Player is 01, right? Okay. Um, he's going to have a collision with this guy, 010, which happens to be the ground. And then it's going to have a contact with 100, which happens to be the category for the coin, right? Um, and so what does the ground do? Well, the ground is category 010, and col it collides with category 01, which is player, but it has no contact, so we just put a zero here, okay? And then coins, on the other hand, they're um, category 100, right? And they have a collision with nobody, so that's none, right? Z zero, and then they make a contact or let us know when they, you know, make a connection or, or touch something, and they touch a player, right? Zero, zero, one. Okay? Um, so anyway, so that's a quick example of, or, you know, just a talk through of how the physics system works, and then we'll um, put that into code in the next video. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that is informative.